The story begins with a very tense war between the Tan clan and the royal army. This war was extraordinary because the Tain clan was the strongest group in the Qing dynasty that had thousands of warriors with the nickname of God Warriors. Reportedly, this clan had taken control of Beijing, Zili, and Shandong. In addition, among the thousands of God Warriors, there was one strange warrior named Yang Luchan. He was a talented young warrior who mastered many Kung Fu moves. However, he had a very odd growth. There was a small horn on his head. However, this horn was not a flaw, because when pressed, Lu Chan would change. So, 18 years ago, Lu Chan was born into the world in a very strange and unconventional way. While other babies come out slowly, Lu Chan shot out like a North Korean missile. But because of his abnormality, Lu Chan was often ostracized as a child even by his own father. Because as an official in his region, he felt ashamed to have a strange child like Lu Chan. But fortunately, Lu Chan still had a mother who loved him very much. Then in winter, little Lu Chan played in the town square. Then he accidentally saw a martial arts performance, and he was amazed by the kung fu moves performed. But when Lu Chan was busy imitating his kung fu moves, suddenly some kids stole his food, and Lu Chan immediately chased them. But unfortunately, the boys bullied him and laughed at the small horns on his head. Then not long after, Lu Chan collapsed on the spot after being pushed by them. However, Lu Chan suddenly possessed Kung Fu skills. Seeing that, the martial arts expert who made the performance earlier immediately separated him. But unexpectedly, Lu Chan's strength was able to make him bounce, even though the boy had never learned Kung Fu before. But afterward, Lu Chan immediately fell unconscious. At the same time, Lu Chan's mother was caught snatching her husband's money. And she did that because her husband didn't want to give a penny to his son. As a result, she was tortured by her husband like a slave and kicked out of the house. Since that day, Lu Chan and his mother lived alone. Until one day, Lu Chan met again with the martial arts expert he had watched the other day, and that person was named Master Zhao. He told Lu Chan that his horns were a gift called the Three Crown Flowers. It is said that the horn is only owned by geniuses chosen by God, and whoever has the horn can master any martial art with just one look. Here, Master Zhao intended to pass on his knowledge to Lu Chan, as he had great potential to become the strongest Kung Fu master in mainland China. Hearing this, Lu Chan's mother was delighted. But unfortunately, her life was on the line because of her husband's cruelty that made it worse. Before she passed away, Lu Chan's mother told Lu Chan that he only needed to do one thing as best as he could in his entire life. After his mother passed away, Lu Chan paid his last respects. He then joined Master Zhao to travel and learn martial arts. Ten years later, Lu Chan was chosen to be one of the god warriors who fought against the royal army, and here it was finally revealed that Master Zhao was a supreme commander of Klat Tianli who was a legendary Kung Fu master in the Qing Dynasty region. For the past 10 years, he has been pretending to be an ordinary person in order to recruit children who have the potential to become god warriors. But in this war, his army had already been cornered by enemy attacks. As a result, Master Zhao ordered one of his soldiers to hit Lu Chan's horns, and Lu Chan was instantly transformed into full power mode. But despite successfully slaughtering the enemy troops, the use of the triple crown flower horn had a side effect that made Lu Chan faint. Therefore, Lu Chan was immediately rushed to the maintenance tent, to be treated by a healer named Uncle Dong. Here Uncle Dong was surprised by Lu Chan's condition, which he thought was severe. So he suggested that Lu Chan shouldn't go to the battlefield again. But this was exactly the opposite of what Master Zhao said. It was Master Zhao who said that if Lu Chan fought often, then his strength would increase, especially when he used his magic horn. However, Uncle Dong disagreed, as it would only endanger Lu Chan's life. Moreover, he also suggested that Lu Chan learn martial arts from the Chen family who could help him to maximize the horn and the inner power or qi within it. At the same time, Teacher Zhao overheard the conversation and naturally felt that Uncle Dong wanted to snatch Lu Chan away from him. They ended up arguing until they attacked each other. 
Unexpectedly, the healer mastered the Kung Fu of the Chen family and was able to defeat Master Zhao very easily. At night, Klat Tan Li rested before continuing the war, but suddenly the royal troops attacked blindly. As a result, Lu Chan immediately left the tent to save his friends. Then he was surprised to see Uncle Dong lying on the ground after being hit by an arrow that stuck in his back and make him can't move. Before he died, Uncle Dong told Lu Chan to take lessons from a Kung Fu master named Master Chen, who of course was a member of the Chen family. Because if not, then Lu Chan would die because he couldn't control his horns. And not long after that, the entire Tian Li army was slaughtered. Luckily, Lu Chan was able to save himself from the massacre, and without thinking, he immediately searched for Chen who lived in a secluded village. After climbing the mountain and passing through the valley, he finally could find the place. Arriving there, Lu Chan immediately saw a strange sight, where there was an ascetic or monk who was meditating on a tree, but with an upside-down body position. Long story short, he asked the villagers about Master Chen's home address, but strangely, the villagers said that Chen's Kung Fu wasn't taught to outsiders like Lu Chan. Then, while Lu Chan was confused, he suddenly bounced off. Seeing this, the woman riding in the car immediately got off to ask about Lu Chan's condition. And apparently this woman was Chen Yu Niang, who turned out to be Master Chen's biological daughter. Yu Niang was seen with her future fiancé named Fang Zijing. Meanwhile, Lu Chan wanted to approach Yu Niang, but they had already left. Then Shun Yu Niang's two older brothers gossiping about Fang. According to them, Fang is the smartest person in the village. In addition, he is also very good at machinery after learning it from abroad, so it's no wonder that he can invent his own car engine. But despite his reputation for being smart, the villagers disliked him for being too fond of Western culture. Even Yu Niang's brother, who was his lover's brother, didn't like him. One night, the village held a meeting at the village hall. At this meeting, the villagers talked about build and constructing a railroad so that the place could be connected to other villages. The person who proposed the construction was, of course, Fang. When the villagers came to the village hall, Fang immediately presented his plan to the villagers. However, they weren't interested and objected to the plan, especially since the railroad requires a large area of land that might have to displace tombs or residential areas. Fang tried to convince them by showing off his electric lamp. However, the lamp failed and broke. As a result, the residents immediately went home from there, and some people then underestimated Fang, because he went all the way to school abroad, but just made a broken lamp. The next day, it was Yu Niang who went about her routine of brewing sake or drinking. But it wasn't long before Lu Chan came over to her. Yu Niang thought that he came because he was sick after being hit by Fang's car a few days ago. Therefore, Yu Niang immediately gave him money as medical expenses. However, Lu Chan's want was to learn martial arts from Yu Niang's father. Hearing that, Yu Niang said that his father's kung fu knowledge would only be taught to the natives of the village. But because Lu Chan persisted, she lied to him by saying that his father was behind the mountain. She actually wanted to make Lu Chan out of the village. A while later, Lu Chan returned to Yu Niang's house feeling disappointed, having been deceived. Yu Niang was surprised by the speed of Lu Chan's feet, as it usually took up to three days to reach the mountain, and here again Lu Chan asked where Master Chen was. However, Yu Niang was too lazy to answer and chose to leave. But Lu Chan kept asking until finally the two of them had a fight. Because of the Chen family's martial arts knowledge, Yu Niang could throw Lu Chan from the top floor until the man fainted. But at the same time, she also felt guilty for him. It wasn't long before Lu Chan woke up and his body was bound upside down. Not only that, there was also a man in front of him whom he didn't recognize. Apparently he was a laborer and physician named Uncle Chang Xing. Here he deliberately hung Lu Chan's body so that his blood flow would resume. After the treatment, Lu Chan asked Uncle Chang Xing if he could teach him Chen family Kung Fu. But unfortunately, Uncle Chang Xing was just a laborer who couldn't do Kung Fu. But unexpectedly, Uncle Chang Xing found out about the three crown flowers. Then Uncle Chang Xing advised Lu Chan to find a doctor because his horns were getting worse and his life was in danger. One night Fang was seen contemplating his failure, 
Then by his side was Yu Niang, who kept him company while playing romantic music. Fang then confided that he was very upset and saddened by the attitude of the villagers who rejected the railroad construction plan. Even though he had promised the governor to complete the construction of the railroad in 10 days. Hearing that, Yu Niang provides a solution so that the construction of the railroad can proceed and the solution is marriage. If Fang wants to marry her, then the Chen family will help him. Moreover, his family was well respected, so permission to build a railroad wasn't a difficult thing for him. But Fang refuses because he's studying abroad to become an engineer and doesn't want to be belittled by her brothers anymore. The next day, Yu Niang goes to the post office and intends to send a letter to Fang asking him not to leave, as the engagement cannot be postponed any longer anyway. However, she was suddenly upset, as Lu Chan came again and asked to be taught the Chen family's Kung Fu. Yu Niang, who was upset, immediately beat Lu Chan up and asked him to duel right away. But this time, Yu Niang utilizes the Kung Fu moves taught by her father with gentle but deadly moves. At the same time, Fang is being severely evaluated by the governor for failing to persuade the villagers to build the railroad. He had already spent a lot of money. But Fang doesn't give up so easily and has enlisted the help of a railroad consultant named Claire, who will certainly help Fang realize the construction of the railroad. However, the governor doubts that the person's presence will be able to help the railroad construction process. Hearing this, Fang persuaded him again. Not only that, Fang and Claire have also prepared a giant tank, made with the best engine of its time. So the plan is that they will displace the village with it. The next day, Lu Chan sat pensively in the market, and he suddenly remembered his mother's message before she died, saying that he should always do his best in anything. Because of his late mother's advice, Lu Chan was reinvigorated and decided to re-enter the village, despite being chased away by Yu Niang. To avoid being caught, Lu Chan entered through the gate while covering his body with a straw roof. But all the villagers tried to tackle him, even a little boy joined in and tackled Lu Chan with his extraordinary martial arts skills. After being beaten by the skillful little boy, Lu Chan still had to fight with other villagers, but again he failed to defeat him. The next day, Lu Chan copied all the moves of the villagers, starting from Yu Niang, the little boy, and other villagers. Because as we know, he has the ability to learn Kung Fu just by seeing the moves once. Then Lu Chan asked Uncle Chang Sing for advice, so that he could enter the village again. And the uncle advised him to copy every move of the opponent. That way, he could definitely defeat them. That day, Lu Chan finally tried to enter the village again. However, here he had to fight a merchant man who challenged him to a fight. If Lu Chan could destroy the box in his hand, then he could re-enter the village. Without thinking, Lu Chan immediately attacked him. Unfortunately, the merchant was too strong for him. But when he fell, Lu Chan was advised by Uncle Chang Sing to mimic all of his opponent's moves as he had suggested earlier, and it turned out to be successful in making the merchant struggle. Despite winning, Lu Chan remained humble. He even apologized to the merchant for dropping his box. After that, Lu Chan ran around the village and climbed up a tower while shouting to thank Uncle Chang Sing for helping him. But not long after, he felt dizzy and eventually fell unconscious, having absorbed too many Kung Fu moves. While Lu Chan was unconscious, the village was suddenly attacked by Fang and his troops, who wanted to evict people's homes with their advanced tanks that were considered monsters by the residents. After reading the governor's order, Fang and Claire began to evict the houses without mercy. Seeing this, Yu Niang was very disappointed with Fang, who had the heart to evict his own village. She then asked Fang to stop the eviction, and Fang, who still liked Yu Niang, was finally forced to back down. After they left, Yu Niang went to her brother to do something, so that the villagers could live in peace. However, the village officials have given up, and the only person who can solve this problem is Teacher Chen, a their own father. The next day, Fang and Claire came back to force the villagers into forced labor. They were ordered to build tracks and refuel tanks. To make matters worse, the villagers are led around by arrogant foreign soldiers who look down and underestimate on them. On the other hand, Claire seems to be angry with Fang, because she just found out that Fang has a special relationship with Yu Niang. 
At the same time, Lu Chan finally woke up from his stupor, and again, the person who saved him was Uncle Chang Sing. Here the uncle told him that the village was in turmoil, due to the arrival of foreign soldiers who wanted to build a railroad to launch their colonization mission. Hearing this, Lu Chan was scared, because he hadn't time to learn Kung Fu with the Chen family. Uncle Chang Sing, who felt sorry for Lu Chan, came up with a strategy to stop Fang and his army. In the evening, Claire is seen preparing to return to her country, because Fang prefers Yu Niang. But Fang tries to hold her back by saying that he actually loves Claire. They don't realize that Yu Niang is peeping at them from the roof, and just as they want to make love, Yu Niang walks in and stops them both with a very disappointed look in her eyes. However, at the same time, Yu Niang secretly took the tank usage book that was there. The next day, Yu Niang went to see a postman with a tank manual containing guidelines and how to control it. Here, she wanted to ask the postman to translate the contents, which were written in English. On the other hand, Lu Chan had just finished observing Fang and his troops tank. He then drew the shape of the machine, so that Uncle Chang Sing could get a clear picture of the machine. After that, the uncle immediately explained the next plan. Without further delay, Lu Chan infiltrated the tank, but when he was inside, he was spotted by the foreign soldiers, and without thinking Lu Chan immediately mobilized his kung fu moves, until finally he could overthrow them all. However, Lu Chan was suddenly attacked from behind. Fortunately, Yu Niang came to help Lu Chan at the right time. They then worked together to stop the tank's engine armed with an engine manual that had been translated by the postman. However, one of the surviving foreign soldiers pressed the emergency alarm and made everyone hunt Lu Chan and Yu Niang. While the two of them were trying to stop the engine, Fang and Claire suddenly stepped in to stop them. Fang then said that if Yu Niang stopped the machine, then he would become her enemy. But Yu Niang didn't care what he said and simply destroyed the machine. As a result of the tank explosion, many casualties occurred, especially the foreign soldiers trapped inside. But unlike the two of them, Claire seemed to be dying as her stomach was pierced by an iron rod. While hold the pain, she wanted to invite Fang to go to London, but fate said otherwise. On the other hand, Lu Chan and Yu Niang could escape safely. Meanwhile, Lu Chan and Yu Niang went to the village hall to announce that the giant tank had been destroyed and they were considered the heroes of the village. However, Lu Chan didn't like all the praise, as his goal was to learn Kung Fu from Master Chen. At the same time, Uncle Chang Sing appeared with a different appearance than usual. Uncle Chang Sing unexpectedly turned out to be the real teacher Chen, Chen Chang Sing. So all this time he had been disguised as an ordinary laborer to calm down while secretly teaching his Kung Fu to Lu Chan. Which means Lu Chan has already mastered some of the Kung Fu moves of the Chen's family. After explaining everything, Master Chen told the villagers to get ready for war, as he was sure Fang and the foreign troops would definitely take revenge. The next day, every villager prepared their weapons and got ready at their respective positions. Meanwhile, Master Chen would be the general while watching from the top of the tower. Before the war began, Teacher Chen urged the villagers not to kill the enemy, as the goal was only to drive them away and warn them. Not long after, Fang came to the village with a well-armed army, but they were confused because the village was very quiet and suddenly the women attacked them with watermelons and other fruits. The soldiers were overwhelmed by the fruit attacks, which could crush their bones. So, with great difficulty, Fang mobilized his troops to fight back. After knocking out one of the citizens, Fang told them to hand over Lu Chan and Yu Niang. Yu Niang didn't decide to surrender to protect the villagers, but suddenly the woman unleashed her kung fu moves to bulldoze the soldiers. Not long after, Lu Chan joined her in the fight. But during the fight, Lu Chan was shot. As a result of the shot, Lu Chan immediately fell down. This also made Master Chen very angry. Master Chen finally intervened to clear out the entire enemy army that was fighting using spears. With only his bare hands, he was able to cripple hundreds of soldiers with ease. Then, he immediately slammed Fang and expelled all of his troops. After successfully driving the enemy out of the village, a new problem arose. 
Lu Chan want to be executed according to the teachings of Chen's ancestors, because Lu Chan has mastered Chen's family Kung Fu, which shouldn't be taught to outsiders. But there is one way that can thwart his execution, which is by marrying Lu Chan to Yu Niang, so that he can become a resident of the village and not being executed. Hearing that, Yu Nang fell silent as she recalled her moments with Lu Chan. Finally, she realized that she was starting to admire and fall in love with Lu Chan. On the other hand, Fang is now imprisoned by the governor, because he is considered useless. A few days later, the whole village celebrates Lu Chan and Yu Niang's wedding. We are shown two mysterious warriors who want to break into the village, and at the same time, the foreign soldiers are also preparing to take revenge on Master Chen and all his followers. After that, the movie ended.